Beautiful. Okay. Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger and welcome to Dare to Dream. Today on the show, I'm featuring Magenta Pixie. She's a best-selling author, a coach, and the channel for the white winged collective consciousness of nine. We'll refer to them later in the show when she comes on as the nines. And Magenta will be talking about the matrix memory triggers for ascension and so much more. So stay with us. This show, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger, won the COV Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. Welp Magazine named Dare to Dream one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. It's high-ranking self-improvement on Apple Podcasts and nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. So if you'd like to become a facilitator or take a class, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie. I am a book writing coach. I am a media visibility expert. I teach spiritual messengers how to take the inception, the idea of their book, and take it to finished and published. I also have a book that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller. Excuse me, it's a service that I run, not a book, <laughs> but four books, a service for books that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller status. And I do all the heavy lifting, nothing for you to do. Finally, I show spiritual messengers, spiritual entrepreneurs, how to be interviewed on radio and podcast and get massive results. I actually have a free webinar coming up very soon. So if you would like to attend, go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift it's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift and join and you will get gifts there, including the free webinar so you can learn how to be interviewed yourself and get massive results. So today my guest is Magenta Pixie, a channel for the higher dimensional divine intelligence known as the white winged collective consciousness of nine. The transmissions that Magenta receives from the nine have reached thousands of people worldwide through the extensive video collection on her YouTube channel. Magenta has been communicating with the nine a sixth dimensional nomadic light structure for over 24 years. She's written many books. Her first book, Master of the Matrix, won the best spirituality books of all time and best consciousness books of all time book awards. Magenta works globally as an intuitive consultant and holistic life coach. She lives in the New Forest, UK with her partner, her son, one dog and two cats. And to learn more, go to her website, which is her name, magentapixie.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Magenta to Dare to Dream. So great to have you. Thank you so much, Debbie. It's lovely to be here, and I want to thank you for inviting me to talk with you today. Why do they call it the New Forest instead of New Forest, England? Well, you can say New Forest, but in England, often places do have a the in front of them. If it's a forest, I think in America, you put the inflection on a different word. So if you were looking at the New Forest, you'd probably say new forest like when it's new year you say happy new year but we in England would say new forest so we would say the new forest and I like new year we would say happy new year <laughs> it's it's strange isn't it that is so <laughs> cool I love trivia like that that and that's so true I have a client who lives in Germany and she lives in the black forest yes and the black forest I've been there when I was much younger. My parents love it there. Very, very different kind of forest to the one here. Um, but yes, it's we know that as the Black Forest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you for explaining that. So your path, did your path start magenta when you read about channeling and you committed to learning to channel? Or was there some other reference point that occurred that got you where you are today? Wow, that's such a fantastic question. And it's really difficult to pinpoint where your path actually starts. Mm. 
because really it's starting right from birth and all these things that happen in childhood. But consciously, um, I was in a bit of a situation uh, myself personally. And I think you get to the point where you turn to something mm -hmm. outside of you, you know, like help me. Um, with me, actually, in that moment, it was my brother. I'd found myself in a situation where I was becoming psychic and I could um, hear what other people were thinking, but it was not controlled. It was not focused. I would hear six or seven people thinking at the same time rather than focusing on one. I didn't understand how to, to use all of this. And I remember getting very, very down and frightened and overwhelmed. And my brother, whilst that wasn't necessarily happening to him, he'd been studying spirituality and psychic awareness for, well, since he was a teenager, unbeknownst to me, because, because it's something he'd kept private. And um, I remember sitting outside of this, this pub, which would be a bar in America, just sitting on the curb on the what you would perhaps call the sidewalk with my feet in the road. And my brother had just done a gig. Um, you know, he, he was a singer. So he'd just been singing with his band. And somebody saw me sit, sitting in the road with my head in my hands because I'd just come from this party where I'd been sensing all these people thinking. There were about 15 people. I could hear everything they were thinking and all the thoughts and I could see um, things that had happened in their past. And it was just, it was like turning a radio or, or a television on and having 15 channels all broadcasting at the same time. I didn't know how to shut it off. It was, it was, a, 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 um, and I hadn't asked for this, not consciously anyway. So someone went in and said, your sister sat outside in the road with her head in her hands. So he finished the gig and he came out and sat next to me in the road. And we just started talking and I, he said, you know, what's wrong? And I said, um, you wouldn't understand if I told you. He said, try me. So I just blurted it all out. And that's when he said, something is trying to communicate with you. You're being activated into a, a calling, into a pathway. I'm thinking, how does my little brother know all this? So he gave me all these instructions as to what to do. And I really listened to him. And I went home and I sat there on the end of the bed and I said, look, if there is something out there genuinely trying to get through to me or talk to me, or if there's something I'm supposed to do, then, you know, I, I'm open to that. Come on in and talk to me. So it was that sort of surrender, that um, innocence, that connection that you just just open yourself to that uh, without any agenda, just come in and be I'm, I'm here I'm, I'm I'm open I'm awake so I would say that is when my path started but that was the very beginning of the conscious um but even then I didn't understand what I was doing by asking for them to come in so there were other awakenings and you're right it was when I went into um, a conscious awareness of channeling that would also be seen as an awakening, if you will. And how that happened was I had seen a medium work in the spiritualist church, absolutely fascinated. First time I'd ever seen a medium work, I was blown away. And I remember thinking, I'm going to do something like that, but it's not going to be the same. It's going to be something different. My brother was with me and I remember saying, I'm going to do something like that, but different. I'm going to be a medium for other mediums. And I remember thinking, why would a medium want a medium when they're a medium themselves? That doesn't make sense. So I didn't understand it. And then a few days later, I went to a shop, a bookshop. And this happens to so many people on the path where a book is just hanging out of the bookshelf. And just as you're walking towards the bookshelf, it falls on the floor. I've had and it that was a little book. I'm, I'm sure it's happened to so many people. It was a little book called Channeling. And I was fascinated and I thought, well, that's not the same as mediumship. This is something different. So maybe I just knew this was the thing I was supposed to do. And it was a series of meditations that you would go through in order to meet your spirit guide, which I believed at the time was a spiritual guide, which, of course, it is. 
but I didn't understand the um, multidimensionality of all of this at that time. So I went into um, a conscious process of meeting my spirit guide, which I eventually did after several mishaps and experiences. I eventually did meet my guide, which was one being white spirit who told me he was fifth dimensional. And then I was with him, this was in 1993, and I was with him right through to the year 2000 when he then upgraded he kind of left and another group consciousness came in or he transformed himself into that group consciousness, however you want to see it. So that's when the nine came in. They came in as one white winged being at first. They then morphed into nine. And then they told me they were sixth dimensional. And then uh, after working with them for some time, months probably, I asked them if there was another form that they had beyond this white winged angelic form. And then they showed me more of a, um, a non-physical, as in they weren't physical, but a non-body, a, 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 a oneness, a unity that still held intelligence and consciousness rather than having a form or a body. So that was this sort of upgrade of that connection, which spanned years. So. To answer your question, it was 1993 and they're, they're the beginning points. Um, what an amazing journey. And I just um, am amazed that, you know, that's a, an exceptional moment. You are in sitting on the curb with your head in your hands, very difficult moment that could have gone a lot of different ways. But the fact I mean, there are no accidents that your little brother had been reading up and learning about this. I just think he was meant to be your guide for sure, maybe in many ways in your life, but certainly in that moment, because that was critical and that he was able to point you to information and instructions that actually brought this out and facilitated the beginning of your journey in such a beautiful way. So bravo to the brother. Um, is he still very involved? in psychic and reading spiritual kind of things? Uh, well, yes, um, it's, it's all correct what you said actually, um, because, <coughs> excuse me, after that there were a series of synchronicities. We ended up after many signs, magical signs, things just happening. We ended up living together in a, a little a flat, what you would call an apartment in America. So he was very much my guide for six months that we were living together at that point mm. and going through this entire experience with me. So when I first started, <coughs> when I first started channeling, he was there with me to experience everything. And I was very um, ungrounded and kind of lost with this. And he would ground me. He would be the one that would bring me back down. I'd say, oh, you know, he's here, he's talking to me and it's, I can feel him. I can feel him in my heart. And I would just, I'm so dramatic, uh, you know, <laughs> and I'd be quite, and he would say, okay, just relax. And I, I'd listen to everything he told me. Um, and it's really strange because prior to that point, we had not got on that well as brother and sister. Wow. We had grown up with this, um, you know, uh, love hate relationship and we would fight and argue. I now know I've known him in many past mm -hmm. lives. Uh, I mean, many, many past lives. And that all came out through the experience of us working. Mm -hmm. In fact, at that time, I was told he was my spiritual working partner for that time mm -hmm. and that I was his and that we were going through a rehearsal for a time when we would actually live this for real. So we went through these multiple synchronicities on a daily basis, incredibly intense. And then I was told that this was like a, a rehearsal for what I now know is the ascension process, which is what everyone is going through, everyone awake. So is he like that now? Yes, very much so. But he likes to be at the moment anonymous and mm -hmm. in the background. He is incredibly talented. I mean, He's a singer, so he's able to bring forward the most powerful, amazing light codes through his voice, through chanting. Um, and he is um, incredibly psychic. And whenever I pick up anything I'm not sure about, I, I do turn to him still and say, I've just picked something up. Uh, what do you think? And he, it, it will be that he picked it up the day before or he'll tune in at the time. In fact, when we were uh, 
talking about the um, the way to, if you will, shield yourself mm -hmm. from everything going on since 2020 and chemical things that were being put out into the human uh, into humanity. I remember talking to him and we were asking, I wonder if there's some kind of shield, some kind of um, uh, antidote. And we looked at one another, which is what we used to do all those years ago in 93. We'd look into one another's eyes and pick up something simultaneously. And I remember looking into his eyes and at the same time I said black flame and he said black egg. I said, right, so this is like confirmation. We will get something at the same time, like simultaneously, black flame, black egg. My sister's there like, oh, you too. <laughs> so he was taught this black egg to put himself in this. And I was taught the, the black flame, which I, I have shared with the people that follow my material. Um, but my brother, and I keep asking him, I keep saying, let me interview you. Come on, come on, come on YouTube with me. Or, you know, if you want to be anonymous, you can, you know, you, we can change your voice and, you know, put a cloak over you or something, a mask or whatever. But he hasn't so far. But mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there will be a time when he will be called to speak because the star seeds are, you know. So he he kind of works when people are, are in his vicinity and he they need him. So someone might say something like, I wonder how I might be able to deal with this. And then he will come in with some help. So he is working spiritually, but he, he doesn't at this point want to be out there um, in front of people. <laughs> I don't think, but I'm fingers crossed that he might one day. Yeah. Yeah. I So I have so much resonance with what you're talking about. On the one hand, I... I have visibility, but I have been also a lot in the background, mostly as a coach, you know, for these media things, but I am having opportunities come to me with zero, doing nothing, saying, come speak on this stage, on really big stages. And I just intuitively understand, I mean, obviously I'm here, like everybody else is a light worker as a piece of the puzzle. So there's import in that. And then there's the piece where when I've spoken on stage, it's always been about books and interviews. Now, because of what I'm stepping into my life and owning, I know it is time for me to start speaking from the perspective of healer, of spiritual person, of you know what I know. And so it's a beautiful opportunity. It's a very uncomfortable opportunity, but I continue to say yes and know that I have everything for it. And another piece of what you said, when you said about this, this sort of wonky feeling, this a little bit ungrounded, I'm in shaman school right now. It's a six month very intensive program. And I would say I'm an incredibly grounded, very earthbound person, like I'm fully embodied. And I have found that as I'm doing these practices, I have a morning practice I do, and I have things that I exchange with other people or sessions that I give people very, very healing, you know, extractions and soul retrievals and all of this. And I am finding a quality that you're describing of a little bit uh, spacey. And I've never felt that before. You know, maybe I've had an off day, but this is like something I'm witnessing going on. And, and it's very interesting. I'm making sure to put my feet in the grass. That's that's like the only thing I know to do. Absolutely. And that's that's very common. And you can feel spacey and ungrounded with it. And when I say ungrounded, I mean, with me, it was things like something would, would occur or the white spirit would say something to me. I would come to a realization and awareness. And my reaction would be, oh, wow, oh my goodness, like this kind of stuff. You know, that's what I mean by uh, by ungrounded, because you can't um, go for, I mean, it's, it's, it's something that occurs in the early days of awakening, but you can't go forward like that long term. You certainly can't teach if you are like, oh my goodness. I and mean, can you imagine if you got in front of an audience of thousands and or millions of people and you're like wow I just got a message oh my goodness it's blowing my mind I mean you just can't do that but the spacey thing you can ground yourself and still have that now what this could be 
is what I call the altered state of consciousness. It's like a spacey feeling. And that very much is the expansion of the mind, the balancing between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain as you are going into this expansive state. One thing the nine have taught me is this very this is very similar to um, hypnosis, but while you are awake. So if you're aware of hypnosis and you're aware of somnambulism, um, the very deep state you go into, um, similar perhaps to uh, a state someone would go into if they were doing something like QHHT, like Dol Dolores Cannon taught, that kind of thing, then that is something that you do while you are awake. Your brain remembers that um, that experience it's going through whether it's you know delta or theta or the nine call this beyond the theta the brain remembers this and at first you you go into this state in dream time or in meditation or in hypnosis or some other trance yoga nidra perhaps but eventually you're able to move into that state when you are fully awake you could be walking around the supermarket buying your your food and you can go into that state. And that doesn't mean you're ungrounded. That means you're moving into this expansive state where you are, um, if you will, if you want to say the word channeling, it's like you are in the state of channeling at that point. But it's different for everyone. Some people, when they channel, will go into um, a persona and they will close their eyes and make sort of, um, you know, funny signals with their hands and sounds and things and then have a new voice come through that's just the way that they align with that frequency other people which is more like me will channel and be yourself at the same time so you mm -hmm. can be you as debbie and you can be you as debbie's guidance but you can be you as debbie and your guidance rolled into one which is ultimately the goal here, because we are in a unified state with our guidance. So we get to the point where the guidance is us and we are them. So I get to the point where I'm magenta and the nine and the, and the nine and magenta and we are one. And that's the balance. And all that is, is a, a brainwave state as the right and, and left hemispheres of the brain expand more and more and more into this um these these uh, brainwave states that haven't even been categorized by science which is why the nine say beyond the theta because they haven't even been given names yet as far as i'm aware maybe gamma uh, i mean i i'm not a neuroscientist but i know that the brain is able to do these things that science haven't caught up with yet in mm. in mainstream so Oh my gosh, thank you so much for that explanation. It puts a, a very beautiful spin on what I'm talking about. And what I heard when you said that is that it's a state of receptivity. Absolutely, yes. And that for me is a heck yes. You know, that is beautiful. It's also, it's there's a very peaceful um quality in this spaciness but <clears throat> thank you for that i'm so gonna that's, take that that's not for you being ungrounded when you have that peaceful state because if you're ungrounded you can be sometimes fearful but sometimes overexcited mm. sometimes um in in a state of uh of over the top disbelief but a peaceful state is the receptivity so that you're not ungrounded when you feel that and you can trigger it by looking at one another. So when you, you can pass this state to other people. Mm. So I can open up that state within me and I can look into your eyes. Yeah. And I can catch your heart. Mm. And we can we can share feelings with one another. That's something we can do with other humans. So we can do this with one another as well as with the higher guidance. So <laughs> that was a nice moment. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know you're not channeling today. And instead, can you respond to any of the upcoming questions with help of your guidance system from you or describe what you're being shown as we navigate this beautiful conversation? 
Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm not channeling. It's very much what I said. It's like mm. a unification between me and the nine. So, you know, when I channel, all you see is magenta pixie. But sometimes that's me. Sometimes that's fully the nine. And sometimes that's both of us. I don't have a, a, a specific change, although there are sensitive individuals that can tell when I make that shift. Uh, mm. But yes, absolutely. I mean, ask away. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, you mentioned magic earlier. And that's something I have a lot of curiosity about sex magic, a lot. <laughs> and I, it started years and years ago when I read a Tom Kenyon book. It was actually about Magdalene, called the Magdalene Manuscripts. And sex magic was described in there and the Isis, the temple of Isis and et cetera. It just something happened when I read all that, some kind of intimate knowing. And I have since been just like hungry, I think, for more about it. And what do you know about it? Can we utilize sex magic to work with karma and to move through the ascension right now? Yes, absolutely. And in my book, Lessons from a Living Lemuria, mm. um, the nine, and I'm channeling the nine as I'm writing that book, they talk about this. They talk about the utilization of sex magic and how you can utilize that because the sensuality of self is the higher energy. It is the Kundalini. It is the unification, heros gamos, between the sacred masculine and the divine feminine. So sex magic can be on your own. And I, I mean, um, energetically, as you unify the masculine and the feminine within you and move into that unity, that creative force, it can be on your own, literally physically as well, using the physical body. It can be in a partnership. You don't have to be a heterosexual you can be homosexual it, it doesn't matter the end it's the energetics that count but let's just say um you know let's say it's a man and a woman then together they can uh you if they're both aware spiritually this is going to happen naturally they don't need to be sat down and taught this although they can be if they want to but if the male is energetically aware and open and connected and so is the female then when they are intimate with one another this will create an energy that they will be able to sense and feel and send to one another and utilize and they that remains with them sometimes for hours afterwards for example if you're a channel you can use intimacy to then go and channel because you're using a sexual energy with your partner and then you're taking that energy to raise your own kundalini and then make a connection with your guidance. Um, when it comes to uh, karma, uh, it, it's really about um, being able to see the balance within every action and all the reactions that come in with that. It's about thinking, okay, I'm going to make a decision and you don't have to... Um, any more make a decision and then live the reality and reap the karma if you will you can go into that energy and play that out in the imagination space in dream time in meditation so you can play all the decisions out first and look at all the the the, the repercussions and the karmic energies and then choose how to go into something and eventually you learn to do that quite rapidly in the moment you can actually move into um, a place where people might know this is instant karma, where uh, you make a decision, but you already know what the repercussion of that energetic decision will be because you are absolutely in the moment and walking the blueprint, walking on those node points of um, convergences with the universal flow. So yes, absolutely, it can be utilized. And this is one thing that has been kept from humanity, kept from the people, you know, people are made to think, oh, that's wrong and that's bad. And, you know, you don't talk about that and it's something you do in private. And it is the way that we expand our fields. Well, one way we can do this in um, completely celibate ways and transcendent ways as well. But sex magic is very powerful and you can be in a relationship and utilize that or not. Uh, there, everybody can do this. So my book, Lessons from a Living Lemuria, 
has a whole piece on on sex magic. Oh, you're muted, Debbie. Sorry. <laughs> In your book, do you have specifics about how a couple can enter into that? Or is there a way you know that somebody can do that? I assume that Tantra is not the way to get to sex magic, that sex magic is something completely different. I'm, I've, I've And I've had taken some classes and done some practices. I just want to preface it with that. But I have this desire, I think when I finished shaman school, to just fully emerge into something like that, really exploring that. Well, your energy actually is aligned with, with that, actually. You've got a very divine feminine energy and very aligned with that. I can see that. Yes, in the book, the nine talk about this and they, they give examples, but they don't go uh, deeply into uh, perhaps um, uh, a specific intimacy. They talk about light, how this is raising light, liquid light, and how we, we can um, understand how to raise that light through the physical body. So Tantra, um, yes, that is kind of sex magic. It's one pathway. If you want to go study Tantra, you, you can. If you want to go to a workshop where someone is teaching twin flame karma sutra dynamics or whatever they want to call it. But what I'm saying is if you are already in that frequency, you are already walking a spiritual path, you are already, already an energy worker, and so is your partner, this will happen naturally and it will be unique and individual to each couple. Uh, but there are many things that can help. For example, yoga and um, eurythmy that I think that was R Rudolf Steiner that came up with that and Tai Chi, anything that allows flow in the body. And then certain foods can also trigger those energy flows as well. Um, certain superfoods you might put in your smoothies. And there's there's lots of things that you can do to create that that energy within you and to work and if you want to work with your partner there there are you can sit down and talk to your partner before you enter into an intimacy and say right I would like to work sex magic with you and you can plan it all out and talk about it or you can just let it happen naturally also I, I will say that there can be an asleep partner and an awake partner and whilst that's not going to have the powerful dynamics of two awake partners, the awake individual can still raise these energies through intimacy with an asleep partner as well. Uh, it's not going to be the same, but it can be done. Um, if you're awake and you are able to work with energy and open the heart, um, you, you will find a way to... Um, be able to change that energy from this divine purity or drawing this down into a sen sensuality. How the nine teach me about this is very much, let's say the divine purity, the flow of spirituality would be the heaven realms, the higher realms, the white clouds, the unicorns, the, the an angels with, with white wings. And then you can go down into the other polarity, into the dark forest where, you know, it's nighttime and there are trees and there's moonlight and there are shapes within the leaves and elemental beings. Um, there are ways that you can change your energy by using these um, images as a focus within you. And the nine teach that as well. And then there are deities or, or goddess presentations as well. For example, there's you, you mentioned Magdalene. That would be one of the goddess energies, of course. And then there's Kali, who can be the light, um, the, the, the wise Kali who nurtures the, the baby within the womb. That's why she's the dark forest. Or there can be dark Kali, which is a distortion of the divine feminine, which many women go through. So that would be a woman who's manipulative and spoiled and um, angry and, um, um, you know, who's using manipulation tactics to control her partner or her sexuality or using her sexuality as a weapon. That's the dark Carly, the unawakened female before she flourishes into Carly or Magdalene, Sophia, 
um, the divine princess Aurora, all of these archetypes, and then there, there are male archetypes as well. Um, and really, this is unique to you as well, because everyone has their own model. So it, it's not really about a teaching. You pick up the, the, the a book of Tantra and read it. But ultimately, that, that is a um, trigger or a, a foundational focus for you to allow your own model to come to you, which is what I see you doing, actually. It's, it's more about rather than you learning it, it's more about you finding that receptive state and letting this unique presentation of that ancient energy to come through you so that it's, it's Debbie's model, Debbie's teaching within this field. And I see it around you already now. It's there. So <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I really received that. And I, I feel like you just gave me so much to work with. <clears throat> and I'm going to absolutely invite that in uh, every day, frankly, and including um, when I do engage in intimacy, that feels so amazing and easy. <laughs> well, it's the it's the creational force. I mean, you know, you come together, you can create a physical creation, a baby, or you can use that energy to create whatever you want to create, whether that's books, artwork, music, channeling, whatever it may be. You are you are utilizing creative energy, and that's what source does. The source frequency is a continuous pulse. Oh, well, the, the ultimate source frequency is, is, a, is a stillness, a, a oneness. Mm -hmm. But outside of that absolute source point, you have a pulse coming out from that, like, like solar flares from the sun. It's the same kind of thing. It's a creational, powerful force, but dance between the male and the, and the female, the, mm -hmm. the masculine and the feminine. What does it mean to transmute one's DNA from carbon-based to crystalline within the context of spiritual enlightenment and physiological evolution? So that would be to, it's, it's awakening really, but this is working with the DNA. So you are transmuting um, the, the DNA um, makeup that we have as um, a human that is not awakened. So someone who doesn't balance the, the, the male, uh, the masculine um, aspect of the brain and the feminine aspect of the brain, the left and the right hemisphere, are in a state of uh, cut-offness or shut-offness where everything is dormant. And we have the double helix, the standard human DNA, mm -hmm. which is carbon-based, carbon-based molecular structure. As you awaken to everything we have just been saying, this expanded energy, the um, merge within the divine feminine and the sacred masculine, the, the sex magic, the understanding of these different frequencies, the channeling, this affects the DNA at a physiological level and the DNA begins to change formation. So that allowing that receptivity, you, you said it's a receptive state, it's a peaceful state. So that is the state of the change, the transformation between carbon-based and crystalline-based. Crystalline-based meaning the light, as in silicate or silicon, but it isn't silicon that we know in a 3D level. It is crystalline light, it's plasma light, it's the light that is... Um, generated forth from source energy from the galactic core the morphogenetic field which is a a kinetic uh, plasma or fire within the antimatter of the cosmos that holds the memories of everything that's ever happened everything that is happening now and everything that will and could ever happen throughout all timelines all alternative alternate universes and all quantum realities mm -hmm. that kinetic fire that plasma fire eternal flame dragon's breath there are so many names for it that is what is within us within the dna that is the crystalline so we do this at a cellular level it becomes physiological if scientists were to look at the dna of these awakened individuals the, the instruments that scientists have don't see the etheric because that, that's not physical. So you have etheric DNA strands that are 
connecting within these awakened people, but there is something, there is some kind of change, but they won't understand what it is. They don't have the tools yet. So just like they don't have the tools to measure these brainwave states, they don't have the tools to look at these um, activations within the DNA. Although the nine tell me that, that some scientists somewhere in the world, I, I believe it is likely Russia actually, um, where they do have um, something more advanced than the rest of the world where they can see they're able to see a, a potential quantum aspects to DNA, but that's not something that's been made mainstream. So that's what that means. It's a tr it's an actual physiological transformation from the carbon-based double helix into this crystalline-based triple helix, beyond the triple helix, and then the nine say infinite helix, because this is when all the quantum filaments come online. But now how that feels to us, outside of this expansive energy and receptivity that you were talking about is memory coming back online it's an accumulation of memory and like I was saying at the beginning when I could hear 15 people's thoughts all at the same time I didn't have the capacity to hold that within me at that time I didn't have the activation um, now I would know to shut that off and only concentrate on one or none or, or whatever but if I wanted to open to 15 or 20 people and see all their energies simultaneously I would be able to do that now because I'm able to work with the quantum energy I'm not sure how many maybe maybe only three or four or five possibly maybe not 20 but I don't really go out and try it but what I mean is you have multiple um, alternate aspects of self. You are not just one person. So there's not just one Debbie. There are many Debbies. And you can work with all of the Debbies simultaneously. And that's the crystalline DNA. That's, that's the memory. And we only say memory because we think of it as something that has happened in the past. As in, I remember when I was source. I remember when there was only me. I remember creating reality. But this is happening now. So it isn't really truthfully memory. Memory is just a word for us to understand what it is. What it is, is a unification with um, an infinite source that's that's occurring right now. It's It's being able to be at one with that unification and be at one with multiple simultaneous aspects of self at the same time and that's also known as omnipresence or omnipotent which is where we're going with this crystalline uh, transformation uh, but we do go in stages within a linear journey there are some individuals that go into this before others uh, but we still look at this linearly and if you want to look at the collective as in the majority of awakened people and where they are right now then the nine would say they're around about the fifth strand, which is a key code trigger, if you will, or, or, or a key to open portals into the fifth dimension, which is this um, dimension of love and unity. So all of these things are metaphors, really, to explain something that there are no words to explain. We choose the best words we can to explain these processes. And obviously this information comes to me from the nine, um, but other people may pick up this exact same information and use different words, use different models to explain what this is. So that's what that means. And when you speak about memory recall as actually being unification, is there also a tie in right now for us connecting to memory recall with Atlantis? with Lemuria, with those experiences and related to right now? 100% there is. Mm. That is pivotal right now. Because um, obviously, if you look at the, the quantum uh, universal structure, then Atlantis is uh, another time period um, of humanity, just like Lemuria and, and, and uh, civilizations previous to that, that is a time period that exists now um, in the quantum structure. But we see this as the past, as in Atlantis is the past, Lemuria is the past and is before that. And we can measure this out in a linear sense. And 
we have to do this to make sense of what this all means, what these transformational times and these changes in cosmic energy and galactic energy, we have to work out what this means. So we use a linear framework. The nine say to me, Atlantis is as much our past as our future. Lemuria is as much our past as our future because we're in a sine wave like this. So we are, well, actually it's, it's a spiral. That's how it moves. But if we're looking at it sort of sideways on, we're moving into a quantum memory and down into the 3D experience and back into a quantum memory. So if you put a sine wave like this on its side and then sort of twirl it a bit, it becomes a spiral. So it's a, a continuation, um, a pattern that is creation itself. And Atlantis, we learn from our memories from Atlantis. So if you hear someone say, oh, I was a priestess in Atlantis and I did this and I did that and I was guarding crystals and I helped this and that to happen, then number one, that could absolutely be a memory of something that literally happened to that person. But when you've got many, many, many women all with the same memories, often this is a, um, a collective metaphor that is a trigger into simply knowing about these time periods, these epochs, these, these transitionary phases that, that the planets go through. And it's, it, it acts as a catalyst for us to um, find out the truth about the reality we're in. When we look out of our window and we see planets and stars and the moon and the sun, what are they? Why are they there? Why do we feel so connected to them? So it's about time, it's about space, and all of these memories are catalysts and triggers into this multidimensional um, and ev eventually the ability to have omnipresent knowing, which is becoming the creator aspect, becoming the God source self. But yes, Atlantis is pivotal right now. Lemuria is pivotal right now. And the periods prior to that, which may have multiple different names, are also pivotal because we're learning about the non-physical aspect of of what this this planet if you look at this planet as a as a spherical being what was the non-physical aspect like um how did we become physical um and how wh where are we going are we leaving the non-physical and going back to this light well the answer is yes because this is a a continuation and a, a repeating cycle uh, multiple cycles and repeating spirals. So Atlantis, Lemuria, and Prior is very pivotal for now because this we are in planetary end times or planetary completion. So all our memories come back from when we have gone through these cycles before. Mm. And can we travel through other dimensions with the activation of our Merkaba or some people call it a Merkaba? <laughs> one or the other yes absolutely so this is like advanced astral travel we're able to do this in the mind we can do this while we're fully awake we can do this while we're asleep in dream time in meditation yoga nidra hypnosis we can use all sorts of states to activate that aspect and it is very much the non-physical higher dimensional fifth dimensional self which is the merkaba that we are using so we're going back to um, our true form, which is the um, the the presentations of mathematic frequency, which is geometry. Um, but we are not or, or really at the collective level at fifth strand. We are not at the level where we are able to transport the physical body through space and time. But that does come later down the line within evolution um, as um as a soul keeps the physical body and then moves forward into uh more of this crystalline dna activation i mean when you get to meta this is again a metaphor 12th strand completion which is a metaphor um then that's when you are able to master the physical body as well and move the physical body through dim dimensions but that isn't where we are on a linear level yet but the answer is yes we absolutely can do that and that can happen spontaneously um, and it can happen through training. 
and through dedication and spiritual discipline as well. Yummy. Magenta, you said that the significant codex of information can be downloaded in us. Can you talk about dragon, Excalibur, crystalline, light geometry, Atlantis, emerald flame? How can those be downloaded in us? So these are memory triggers, if you will. They are um, coded within each human, every human that's born um, into 3D. There are, uh, it's like an alphabet coded within the DNA of that individual that is lying dormant as a, as a package. When someone begins to um, awaken and open up to these expansive energies, they unlock this package within. Oof. And this can come in, in many forms. It can be music that comes to that person. Mm. It can be artwork and visuals. It can be sound that's not necessarily music, but more like um, a language. Um, it, it can be um, a chanting. It can be all sorts, all sorts of things. Uh, but also it can be... Um, images that are cosmically known by all of humanity so for mm -hmm. example if you take the tarot deck mm -hmm. each tarot card is a um a, a flame letter if you will within the dna and is known at the dna level but outside of tarot there are other models and the whole story of camelot king arthur queen guinevere Excalibur, moving Excalibur from the stone, um, what the sword Excalibur actually is, uh, the flame, the eternal flame, the dragon, the dragon moving through the stargate, the dragon moving through dimensions, the dragon uh, breathing fire and creating the ring of fire. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things are um, memory triggers and deep metaphors that are multi-layered so if you don't understand this and you haven't had any downloads yet, but you want to, you might feel that you resonate with some of these images without knowing why. Many, mm. many, many star seeds, especially male star seeds, but females too, but very male, will resonate with dragons for years and years and don't know why, right from childhood. Yeah, I and do. So any yeah, absolutely. Any fantasy fiction film on, on, on the big screen that's got dragons in, they're like, I have to watch this. Mm -hmm. um, so and anything, again, King Arthur, Camelot, Excalibur, uh, some people with unicorns. The, the film like Avatar, with the, the Avatar beings living in the forest, living in nature, mm -hmm. um, these are all memory triggers and presented in different ways because... A, they can allow us to remember actual, physical, literal experiences that we lived in a linear sense in other lifetimes. But also they can be quantum alternate lifetimes that we could have lived, but we didn't in this consciousness. And they're also multi-layered metaphors. So like the, the Excalibur, the sword of truth, as you hold high the sword, you are... Um, holding up an emblem of um, sovereignty and warriorship and truth and all of these things. And, and the nine call them flame letters. And there are some that are very powerful because all star seeds have them. Um, and some of them are words rather than pictures like ascension itself, the word ascension, um, crystalline. And one really powerful one is remember. When you say remember, remember, because every star seed has come in with that word, remember, because it's so important to remember. And there will be star seeds that remember being born. And I'm I'm one of them. I remember this being born and having the um, memories wiped as you're incarnating and mm. desperately trying to hold on to them. And all that you all that you retain from that is the word remember, remember, I must remember, but you're not sure what you're supposed to remember but if you know you're supposed to remember something then you're going to be looking for it mm -hmm. so when I say star seeds I mean there's so many ways of looking at this people say uh, uh, isn't everyone a star seed potentially yes every human being 
has this lying dormant. But we're looking at um, uh, a presentation prior to incarnation, which again is just memory. Really, this is the higher presentation that's with us now. But if we look at it in a linear sense prior to, there are some individuals destined or programmed or um, blueprinted to wake up. And there are those that are destined and blueprinted to not wake up. But again, that's metaphor. When you're in the moment with the higher self, everyone can have the, the chance to make that connection. But there are those that don't. And there are those that make decisions in their lives that do the opposite. They actually shut that down. And that's all part of their journey and the reason why that's part of their journey is because for those who are awake they are going to be blueprinted and programmed to want to take as many souls with them as possible into this awakening well of course because that creates more of the um, reverberations and strength and an expansion of that energy but we have to learn to allow free will to others and that includes allowing others to not wake up Mm. to not know the truth mm. and to not go through ascension, even mm. though all souls came here to do that. But if the soul makes choices in their life that's leading them to not do that, we have to learn to allow them to do that, but be ready for the slightest possible change in them where they might possibly be open to some kind of awareness. And then we can come in without overstepping their free will and help them to awaken in that one area. So, wow. so there's, the, there's the collective way of looking at all of us as humans and what we are to one another, but ultimately there is the individual perspective because from the higher perspective, there's only one soul in incarnation. There's only one of us in this reality from the, um, from the, from the oneness, from the unity perspective. Very true. Very, very true. And I like so much how you put that because it, rather than being something of separation, it's filled with acceptance for all the choices exactly in perfection. Exactly. Yes. And when you were, oh boy, I resonate with the dragon. I love dragons. And I don't know why so often in movies, they're depicted as these terrible creatures because to me, they're magical. God, I'd love to meet a dragon, but yeah, I see them as mystical and magical and just beyond how they can fly through the sky and even, you know, the fire of protection. That's how I see it, a protection and boundaries and all of that. But yeah, I don't think they should always be depicted as these terrible creatures that should be killed some at some point. No. <laughs> in the storyline. And what do you resonate with of all the things that you named? Where is your resonance? The same very much with dragons. And, and, and I have been for many years. Um, and Excalibur as well. Uh, very much like the majority of starseeds and, and winged um, elementals, the, the fairy and the pixie, um, which is why I chose the the name Pixie. I mean, I when I was thinking of my name, it was a YouTube username actually that I was thinking of at the time. So I chose magenta because of the color, the the divine feminine color of source being magenta, that magenta pink, and fairy because I'm so fairy like and I have yes. such a connection with that. And so I I thought magenta fairy. I thought, oh, that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> it just didn't resonate. And then I thought, well, hold on. The, the next closest is a pixie. I thought magenta pixie. That goes. And I was a pixie when I went to brownies when I was about seven. And you know, I grew up reading Enie Blyton as well with the fairies and the pixies. There would be the wishing chair with the little pixie um, on the back of the chair that the, the, that the children went off to all these different adventures all these different lands. I mean, any Blighton stories kind of kept me awake within that fantasy way of thinking. Um, I don't think I ever really shut down from that since birth. Uh, I, I do remember I turned away from it around teenage years, but um, I don't think I ever really shut down. So yeah, dragons and anything within that fantasy realm, magic, telepathy, um, telepathic children. Uh, when I saw Escape um, to Witch Mountain, that was out when I was about I don't know five or six or seven I can't remember what age these telepathic children Tony and Tia 
I mean, I was just sat there with my eyes open and I was having those those triggered memories back then as a child mm -hmm. because I knew and they were off to they were extraterrestrial children. They were going to a, a, a UFO, I think. And I remember just feeling deep down inside that this is real. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but you try and talk to the adults around you. Oh, it's just a story. It's just fantasy. And but I knew I knew that there was more. I always knew. So anything like that. I've resonated with since childhood, but dragons very much. Mm, beautiful. What are the latest messages, uh, messages from the sixth density to the third regarding consciousness raising and the dimensional shift that's now taking place? Well, I'll have to update that bio actually, because the nine recently, I think it was a few months ago, told me that they are um, pretretty much into seventh density now. So they're, they're kind of seventh density uh, rather than than sixth or, or certainly in the transition of. So I should talk about that more. But um, lots of information about this year. And I, I've spoken before a lot about the bifurcation. And I'm sure you know what that means. This split between people who are asleep and people who are very much awake and the chasm between those individuals getting more and more and more. Uh, until it, it looks as though we have two worlds. You've got the people going along with this, the narrative, um, totally asleep, totally following the, the crowd and the awakened individuals awakening more and more and more into this expansion. And so um, it gets to the point where th th it's very difficult to have a crossover or a communication with um, the people that are on the other side of that bifurcation. When that gets to the chasm where it's almost to the point where you're saying to yourself, I can't talk to these people anymore. I can't mix with people who are asleep. I just can't function with them. When it's got at critical mass level at, at that point, at that thought, then we're entering into a trifurcation, which is a third part of this split, which is a bridge between the two. So you have the awakened individuals going through this expansion. You have those that are asleep, that are digging their heels in and, and refuse to shift out of that, that pattern. And then there's this bridge between the two individuals who will be able to have a foot in both worlds and somehow um, help in some way. And this will be physical. It will be emotional, mental and spiritual within that bridge. Um, and then there are different messages for each of these different aspects of the bifurcation and the trifurcation. So what's actually happening here within this bifurcation, these two extreme differences, you have some people that not only are they digging their heels in and wanting to um, not awaken and be angry with those who have awakened because they all look crazy, <laughs> trying to bring them back down to reality, but then there are individuals that have gone through an awakening, but that are not coping with that awakening. They, they, they are finding um, that they're seeing the control structure more than they're seeing this freedom and, and light and liberty. So you have people getting very down, really struggling with their spiritual path, very depressed. And so you have the healers on this awakened side working more now than they ever have and, and the call mm. very much is healers be ready because you can't force someone to come to a healer of whatever kind that may be but the people that are asleep to all this are still struggling with not being um helped within mainstream orthodox medicine or orthodox um counseling and psychiatric help and uh, so they're they're looking for some other way to help themselves and they're coming into the awakened aspect of the bifurcation while they're asleep and so you've got these healers that have got to work with I've got to help this person who's completely asleep doesn't want to wake up does not believe in anything holistic but they're still here with me so you've got healers are are uh, being given um, a huge range of new challenges um, and then you've got other individuals that are coming for rapid healing, rapid awakening, moving into activation, really bringing in that crystalline light. 2023 is this movement from this bifurcation and seeing the first signs of this trifurcation as we move forward. And you've got people 
on one side that are going through the best times of their life. They're in a state of bliss. They're always in the sunshine. They always have joy in their hearts. They're dealing with all of the dark side of reality. They're integrating it very quickly and they are healing themselves on multiple levels and really, really going through that ascension process, that crystalline transformation in a beautiful way. And then you have all these other individuals that are struggling with it and those that are refusing to go with it. And that's kind of 2023 in a nutshell. And on top of that, you have another group of individuals trying to shut the awakening down and putting out misinformation and, and, and presenting it as absolute truth and then taking absolute truth and turning it around and calling it misinformation and that not working with these awakened individuals and the more that they try to do it the more truth comes out the more the misinformation is shown it's 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 a really um amazing pattern of multiple levels of awakening for 2023 and it's it's very quantum we have entered a quantum phase when it comes to the awakening process and that's what I see for the rest of this year and into next year. All sorts going on on multiple levels, every agenda, every truth that's been hidden, um, every, everything is coming out in its real truth and the, the, the sort of fake uh, truth that's being presented as well. There's like a fake or, or um, um, distorted side, an inverted side to everything that's coming out. And it's it's just all... You know, we're really entering into this time period now, you know, right now. We, we started really with these eclipses and this this um, uh, comet that did this flyby at the beginning of the year, the eclipses. Now the summer solstice is going to be incredibly powerful, a really, really high vibrational time. Um, and it's about purging as well and releasing everything that no longer serves you on all levels, physical level, releasing toxins physically, um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, a real purging, because the more you purge, the more you can bring in this light and uh, these memories, these aspects of self. So that's kind of what's happening. And sometimes that's flowing beautifully, and other times it can be very overwhelming, and it can almost appear like it's breaking down. It's major integration within this quantum presentation of ascension in humanity for the rest of this year. Yeah. Wow. That was some truth right there. Uh -huh. Without a doubt. And, you know, I saw at the beginning of COVID, everybody I knew who was a healer, you couldn't even get on their schedule. They're friends of mine, right? And colleagues, and they became so busy and still are because these are the people we're looking to, to help us through this time. And when I have had somebody who is a healer come to me and it's very rare, but it's happened twice. And these people are struggling financially. I'm like, I, there's something in your space that's off because that is impossible right now. I know this, I'm witnessing it. And if either you're not great at what you do, calling it like it is, or there is just some kind of real poverty issue that needs to be dealt with in your space because every other healer I know, it they are doing so well in helping so many people. And I love that we're living in this age where those are our doctors and our priests, if you will, these priestesses. These are the people we are looking to to help usher us in and up-level us and heal all the bullshit we don't need to carry around anymore and bring in all the qualities you know that's part of my morning practice i mean it's a really deep morning practice but one of the many things i do is i ask for the fire to burn off anything that doesn't serve me and to fortify with fire everything that is in me even if it's latent to come forth right now and i ask for the water element to do the same and the wind element and spirit and animals and all sorts of elements to assist me in this time with this, because I, I feel for me, that's the only way is just to release, release, release sometimes into the earth and then to pull up from the earth, you know, and all the other elements, those 
pieces that are mine and to be that. And that's perfect. And everything you've just said is 100% correct. That's exactly how it is. And all the processes you are going through, working with these elemental forces, all of those things are so beautiful. It's creating so much light within you and releasing everything so that your life can go on this um, synchronistic path. And when it comes to the healers, it, it's true. If there is a block there, then they either need to shift and change the, um, the, the, the method that they're using or there is something that's stopping them in that abundant flow. And you, I can see, have a, a, a great knack when you say call it like it is. That is the, the, the sort of feminine power that you're not afraid to say it like it is. And, and women have not been able to do that for so long, so many years. And now it really is the time for women to be able to really bring forward the divine feminine, which isn't just about the nurturing and, and the, the, the motherly side and the healing and the loving. It is being able to call something out that, that isn't working. And, and, and that will help people as well. And they will respect you more. And you have that balance. I can see that. And it's it's wonderful. And I, I hope I have that too, because I try very hard to find that balance that I didn't have in the early days of awakening. And White Spirit and the Nine taught me, uh, with the help of my brother and other people in my life, to temper that fire that was all over the place <laughs> and bring it down into something that I would then be able to control in a, in a peaceful way. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really beautiful. And everything you just said is spot on. Mm. And these healers are amazing. Honestly, they are literally amazing. And there are so many of them working behind the scenes. They don't want to be known. They don't want fame. Uh, they just stay back and they watch. And when they're called, they do their work. And some of them are so powerful and just wonderful. And it's the same with grid workers and people working with the planetary system, the galactics, the earth, many, many, many souls that do not want to be and do not have to be in their mission in front of the cameras, in, in the spotlight talking, that's not their path. And they are so powerful. And when a psychic individual can see them, then we honor them and let them know that they're seen. And I've always seen them there right from when I first, you know, decided or was told to go public with everything I knew. I, because I was slightly afraid. And then I was shown the team, the nine showed me, they said, see how many there are of you. And I'm like, wow. So I know those people are out there and there's just millions and it's unbelievable. And it's far more than um, the other sort of, uh, other side of this this whole bifurcation if you will the other side of the light the opposite of the light is far more than they realized so they underestimated that star seed movement if you will it's fabulous yes indeed and you know i was working with a client yesterday and uh, one of the particular things she was taking through that she wanted to release in her life was this inability to speak up. And I think that's the good girl syndrome. And a lot of us have experienced this. Um, and so she was living with that, but at the same time, having experiences that were very debilitating with really controlling, gaslighting, much like you spoke about what's going on in the world today with people who won't step into the truth, but they're essentially gaslighting. They're taking the truth, they're bastardizing it, spinning it and putting it back out as though you're crazy, right? Yes. And um, it's comical on some level, but it's also a little mind blowing. And so she was living through some of those dynamics with men and in particular, um, and so when we completed the healing, you know, one of the things I felt very compassionate about letting her know, because she was coming out in a whole new state was to say, you know, with great love and care that it's okay, because actually you're embodying the collective. That's my feeling is that this has been a feminine collective that we have chosen and allowed ourselves to live under this inability to speak up. And of course, how we speak, potency, absolutely, clarity. And then there, I believe, 
there needs to be, and I don't know exactly the word if it's gentility, but there's a way to communicate with great love, but great clarity to somebody. And so I just wanted her to know, and I'm saying this, you know, for the every man, every woman listening right now, that it has been a collective. So when we're healing ourselves to find our voice and our place, we're also healing the collective. That is our, you know, drop, our pebble into the pond and our contribution. And it's okay as you're finding your voice, as you get there. I support you. I support you to get there. Absolutely. So true. And I, I actually like to, um, when I meet someone who's quite shy and doesn't want to speak publicly, I like to be able to help that person to come into finding their voice. Because I think if you've been constantly told um, what you're saying is wrong or it doesn't make sense or shut up and be quiet and speak when you're spoken to and all of this. And it's coming in from past life memory as well, when um, especially women have been suppressed in that area. You can actually, if you're waking up psychically, spiritually, you can actually hear those voices in your mind and think, I mustn't speak up. And if you try to, you can hear whether it's your father, uncle, teacher, boyfriend, husband or, or uh, uh, you know, a female uh, whoever it is, you can hear them in your mind saying you're not good enough to speak. What you what you say isn't good enough. And this is the education system does that to you as well. The school system. So we're all breaking free from that. There are people who are the opposite, like me. I was more talking too much, say you know, interrupting people, um, speaking when I'm not spoken to, and doing it all the time, and having to learn the opposite, having to learn to pull that back learn to be silent, learn to listen, learn not to speak. That was my journey. And that's very indigo. So indigos will have come in with their voice from day one. And it's more of a crystal energy. And this is just one way of explaining these individuals in a frequency sense. The crystal individuals are, are quieter and have like perhaps a little bit of a, um, a held back throat chakra and they have to learn to bring the voice forward and speak. But that's the journey everyone's going through right now and that other side that um, the opposite to the light are trying to stop those voices silence those voices the indigo team if you will the more an indigo is silenced the more they will speak the more they're told to be quiet the louder they will talk and they've been like it since childhood They've been like it since childhood and they've come in in droves. We couldn't do this without the Indigo team because they are they will not have it. <laughs> and the more they're told lies, the more they will blast the truth at you. I mean, they they just won't be told what to do. That's the Indigo. And then the crystal individuals are the healers. They're tempering that with their more of a, of a softness and acceptance and a love. And they're learning to come up and they're taking their lead from the indigos thinking, wow, they're speaking out. And I agree with what they're saying. I can't say it myself, but I agree with them. Hey, why don't I learn to say it myself? And the crystals are a great example for the indigos who can be too forceful, <laughs> too strong too too shouty you see lots of the truthers um you know that people will call anti this and anti that and, and creating some kind of um ag aggressive speech well these are these are indigos that haven't quite come into the balance and when they look at the crystal uh, souls they can learn to step back at times and then when that happens when the indigos balance and the crystals come out with the finding of the voice I mean, you literally have this um, this amazing, profound warriors of light across the world. And that's, that's what's happening. In this sort of um, three-year cycle, I would say 2023, 2024, 2025, we're really going to see this. By 2026, I feel, and I know that seems a long time, but I feel by 2026, we will see this balance really showing itself in mm. what we know is the alternative movement, the holistic movement, because the alternative movement is coming into equal balance with the mainstream and then taking it over in all fields. The mainstream is, is losing this. They either have to change and, and, and mirror the, the, and really it's about truth and misinformation. That's what it's about. It's about identity and, showing true identity 
And that's another big one for 2023 is identity and, and people having to prove who they are online and uh, outside of, of online and in, in the real world, prove who you are. And so they create all these issues and, and flood the internet and flood reality with um, situations that might confuse people and they mm. don't know who you are. And I'm talking about technology and AI and, and um, uh, copycats and, and all these people trying to clone your accounts. And yes. th there's, a, there's, a, you know, there's an agenda behind the majority of that. That's a big thing this year. But yeah. this, this tr true truth warrior indigo reality, wh th that group of people, when they balance themselves, they will be showing what is true. Mm -hmm. They will find a way. People say to me, what are we going to do about all this identity stuff? What happens if we've got to show ID cards and make videos of ourselves and, and give voice software? And I don't want to buy into all of this. This Indigo Collective, with the help of the crystals at their side, these warrior awakened individuals, they will find a way across the world to get around this, to work with it, to integrate through it. It, nothing is going to stop the ascension process. It's impossible. It's impossible. Wow, that was so amazing what you just shared. <laughs> I'm reverberating. I really got a lot out of that. And you put it in a way, Magenta. You absolutely describe me in this. I do. Room. I can see that is you. Yeah, I can see. And it's, it's me as well. <laughs> I didn't know that, though. So it's such a You didn't gift. know you were an indigo? No, not at all. And, and this, the more you try to shut me up, yeah, it's like, oh, this is a, such a trigger for me. Like, it's also a childhood wound, not being heard and seen. And yeah. then, you know, compilate it with whatever else is inside of me. But yeah, it's like, I must speak my feelings, my truth. And the more somebody, oof, yeah. And the, the interruption sometimes, I'm really very mindful of it. Um, and it doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen a lot, just in certain situations where somebody goes on and on and on and is like, <laughs> I must speak the truth. Yes. Yeah. Um, but that was beautiful. All of that was such a sound bite, um, a sound buffet. I loved it. So we're at the end and I'm not happy about that because I could <laughs> do this with you for so long. You really delivered so much. And I thank you for that. This was extraordinary. The place for people who want to work with you, tell us magentapixie.com. What else? How can people work with you, find you, get your books, everything? So actually, I know you read out my bio at the beginning, which was lovely, but I, I don't do consultations, private consultations anymore i i was um for a long time and I, it was wonderful but i don't anymore um however if somebody does want a private consultation they can write to me and i do have people that i can recommend them to that i know uh personally and that i've worked with and that are friends of mine if that's what they want um so i'm i'm kind of interactive i've got some uh social media groups telegram i've got a group on me we so i'm kind of interactive there i'm on instagram and my website is magentapixie.com and you can see links to all the books um, that I've transcribed from the nine. There are six books and they're all on the on the website. And then there are meditations which have all been channeled. And then there's a little section with free stuff and you can download some free meditations. And there's some articles on there as well that are that are free to read. And um, but Telegram is, is a good one. I've got a group there and I'm more interactive there than anywhere else actually and um so it's getting it's a really nice group i think there's about four and a half thousand people nearly five thousand people on that group now which has built up slowly and it's it's um people are very helpful if you can't get hold of me personally um go to telegram and say look i'm, I'm new i just saw magenta speaking and i need help with this this and this and the, the people will help you on the group they will pass you into the right direction tell you where to go um, where you can find somebody that will assist you with anything, whether it's spiritual awakening, whether it's physical health, um, you know, dealing with what's going on. All of those topics have been discussed and 
so you, you can get help there. But my website is magentapixie.com. This is Dare to Dream, Magenta Pixie. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? Oh, wow. What a wonderful question. Oh, you know, I would love to see a lot of the things that I see that I know are coming down the line. I really would love to think that I will be here to witness those things. I would like to witness really the creation of new earth. And I know that's going to go on for many, many years, but I mean the the early creations of new earth as we're coming together in a community style, as we have alternative ways of doing things, as the system is forcing us to do one thing and we are finding new ways to do those things and having community that's there now. And I would, I would love to see that grow and, and see more of that. Um, and I want to carry on working with the nine and, um, I, I envisage another book coming. I've no idea what it will be about at this point, but I look forward to when the nine, you know, come in and are ready to work with me with another, another book, which happens in surprising ways. Um, more of the same, really more awakening, really more going forward and connections as well. That is the most wonderful thing is to connect with the family of light and in re in real life as well as online to actually meet people and you have these memories think i know you i've known you before i've known you in other times and i really really also dream about truth real truth coming up from behind that misinformation and showing itself and even if others can't see it there will be those that do and it's really time for truth these are my dreams right now hmm. Hmm. go to magentapixie.com or telegram to keep following and enjoying magenta and i end today's show with this quote when you are born in a world you don't fit in it's because you were born to help create a new one Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Please like and comment. I do read everything that you write, and I appreciate it so much. Next week on the show, I am featuring the amazing Corinne Grillo, who's just released her second book, and she's going to be talking about angel wealth magic. Corinne is an angel healer, a teacher, a psychotherapist, and a spiritual instigator. So join us then as well. Thank you so much for being with us today on Dare to Dream. We adore you. And remember to create all your dreams into your reality.